Let's make a junk journal from these old jeans. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So I just came back from the flea market and I bought two girls jeans and a girls jeans jacket. I paid in total for this six euro 50. So I think it was like two euros, one euro and three fifty. And I'm thinking what I could use really well are all of these pockets here. I think they would make great pockets and other, I don't know, tuck spots, belly bands, whatever. What I really loved on this pair of jeans is, look at all this ripped stuff. I think that's really cool and that would look really, really cool as like a spot to tuck things in. You know, maybe you know this Tim Holtz die that has these slits. This is what this reminded me of. <laughs> so I thought that could be really cool. And of course, we can use the pockets as well. And in this jeans jacket, I also really like these pockets. And I'm sure there's a way we can use this part here and I could imagine this looking really cool. So yeah, let's see what we can make out of it. Maybe we can make a closure using this somehow. I don't know yet, but I'm super excited to give this a try. I want this journal to have a soft cover, so I'm using a paper bag as a base. So I'm going to start off as I usually start off with paper bag journals by taking apart the bottom of the paper bag. Then I'm going to cut part of this down. I'm going to cut off the handles. And then I'm also shortening it. So what I'll have left now is this here. I'm going to leave this fold because it strengthens the journal. And I can now just fold this and that can be our cover. So currently I have approximately 16 centimeters. So next I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew all the way around. As always, you could leave a pocket in the front or the back, but I'm just going to stitch everything closed. So I've sewn all the edges together with a running stitch. Obviously, if you don't want to sew and you want to make a paper bag cover, you can just glue the edges together instead of sewing them. I have also cut and dyed a piece of a tablecloth. The dye is a mixture of coffee and tea, very randomly put together, no recipe. And these purple spots that you see here were not intended <laughs> but i had this drawing on a piece of parchment paper that had some purple distress oxide on it which i didn't pay attention to so now my cloth has these which is totally fine with me and in fact i'm going to add some more distress oxide to this i have this very cool new stencil and it's by stamperia i'm not sure if this is the number of the stencil it's KSTDL55. I don't see any other number here. So maybe that is the number of the stencil. Anyway, it's like a crackling thing. So that is super cool. And that's what I want to use on here. I like wearing gloves when I work with distress oxides because the stains on your fingers don't come out for days and days. And I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Spray Uncharted Mariner because I think this color works super well together with jeans. So let's see how this fabric will react. I should probably cover this part up. Yeah, 
Yep, that looks good. Now I just continue. I should probably cover up this side, right? And one more time. Or maybe two more times, actually. This will make very cool collage paper. And this will hopefully make a very cool cover. <laughs> this here is the faintest. So this is the fainter side. And I cut out this piece of the leg. Sounds horrible, right? I cut off a piece of the leg. <laughs> and I think this would be really fun to have on the front, but it kind of looks too clean now on this background. So I think I should spray this as well. Maybe not the whole thing, but maybe on some parts. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Yes, much better. Then I cut this whole part off the bottom of the jeans jacket. And I think we could make this into a closure by separating these two parts and then we could sew on one or two buttons here. Two would actually be cool because that means depending on how full the journal is, we could close it here or here. And then this part here could wrap around and be our closure. That would be interesting. So what I've done in the meantime, I have first sprayed both the jeans fabric and this fabric with some matte spray film. Since this is Distress Oxide, it would react if it becomes wet. So I want to be sure that this is more permanent. So I went over that twice. And then I sewed on first this piece here and I chose the color of the thread that jeans usually have. And then I sewed on this part here with the two buttons. And this closure now is actually completely removable. So I sewed on another button on the spine piece. And you can see you can take this off completely and then just have it like this without a closure as well. Or you can just close it. Going back to our paper bag piece, I've also cut out a piece of this gorgeous Tim Holtz fabric. As you can see, it's a little bit larger than the paper bag. And this is going to be the inside. So I'm going to sew this on with my sewing machine as well. Again, you could just glue it if you don't want to sew it. I don't want to glue this together until I sew the signatures in because I want to sew the signatures through these two layers but not through this layer because I don't want the stitches showing through the cover here. But I do think the cover is still too plain so I want to see what other elements I could maybe add. And one thing I'm considering is these dies I have. So one is called Essential Shapes and came with my Sizzix Fold Away die cut machine. It's the number 662220. I don't know if you can find this separately. So it has a butterfly, a four leaf clover, this swirly thing and a heart. 
and then there's this one that I bought used a few years ago. It has a number 660236 and it's called Butterfly Duo. I know this is no longer available in the shops, but maybe eBay would have it. It has these two cool butterfly shapes. And I'm going to use the three butterflies and punch those through some of the jeans fabric. So here they are. So these are the two from the Butterfly Duo die, and this is the one from the Essential dies. So let's see if we can arrange them somehow. Okay, I have one other idea. I'm not sure I'm liking any of these options, 100%. Why not try making some flowers with the jeans material? Let's try that. Okay, so I've made a few. I'm going to make another one and show you how I made these. I did try several methods and I found this one is the flattest and most conducive to jeans material, specifically because it is very thick. So I have a piece of the leg here and I'm going to just cut a thin strip, very thin. And then I'm going to fray the edges by just pulling on the threads that are on the outside. So now this is what my little strip looks like. Many people do this with a hot glue gun, but with my history of burning my fingers multiple times with the hot glue, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to use regular textile glue and this works perfectly. I'm going to start off by just putting a little bit here on the beginning. This is going to be the inside. And I'm just going to start rolling this tightly it's a bit hard to see because it is so small <laughs> and as soon as i've got like a little round thing like this i'm going to start turning the strip it doesn't matter if you turn away or towards you i always like going in one direction whichever direction i choose so i'm going to twist it towards me and then just keep wrapping. And I'm going to keep twisting towards me fairly often because I don't want the layers wrapping around just flat. I want it to have a little bit of dimension. So I'm just twisting, twisting, twisting. And once in a while, I will add some glue to secure it. Just a little dot. And then just keep doing that until the size I have is what I want. And if one strip is not enough, I can just glue a second strip onto this one. So slowly your little flower will emerge. Just keep doing this, putting glue. It's super easy and I love that you don't have to sew. You don't need to create a base. Okay, and when you have the size that you're looking for, I'm just cutting off the end and gluing that end part down. And that's it. Easiest flower ever. There you go. You have a tiny little flower. <laughs> so I have six little buds now. Now I can play around with these. I could imagine something like this working, but I want to also add something else underneath these buds. They look a bit empty underneath. So let me maybe try to cut out some petals. Super easy shape, very easy to cut. I like that a lot. 
I'll do the same thing for the ones on top here, maybe just a little bit smaller. Yeah, I really like that. And to make it look a little more grungy, maybe we can add some thread underneath the flowers. I chose white because we have the white here and I think that cost to contrast is really nice. Yep. And maybe we can also add some dark ones from where I was pulling the threads when I was cutting my strips because that's also a beautiful contrast. So let's try adding both of them together. Yep, I like this very much. So I'll do the same thing for the one on the top. Then I think our butterfly needs a little more oomph. He's a bit plain, isn't he? Unfortunately, I don't have any white stamping ink, but I do have white embossing powder. I've never tried embossing powder on fabric like this. So we need to try that. And I think I want to add some numbers. I have the Tim Holtz field note set here. The number is, is CMS396. You can find this link below in the description box and I'm going to choose some numbers here. Maybe this one here to start off with. Let's put him on some paper using my clear embossing stamp pad. Put one like this. Add my embossing powder. Let's see if this works. Ooh, yep. Okay, let's heat this up. And it works. It doesn't give me a clear impression, but that's totally fine. I just wanted to have some white. So let's pick another one. I'm going to take this one this time. I'll stamp this on this wing, partial stamp. This one is a little more clear, I think, because it has bigger numbers. It also gives it like a crackling effect. Can you see that? That's kind of cool. And I also think it needs some stitching in the middle here. So I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and do some zigzag stitching. So here's what that looks like. And maybe you can see I also added a tiny bit of this beige thread that I have here along my other pieces. And I think the last thing it needs is some antennae. So I have these here, which are usually used for flower making. And I want to just cross these, add some textile glue here. Whoops, not that much. So I always think they look better if you cross them on the back. And we can add a piece of tape. Just hold all that down. I'm happy with that. And now I think I could also add some more of this white embossing here and maybe a little bit here. How about the shipment collect here? That's from the same field note set. And then I have a bigger number here. I could add that here. Let's give that a try.
So now I'm ready to glue all my parts down and I'm going to do that with my textile glue. And then I'm going to take my treasure chest, <laughs> all my bling, and maybe it will look nice to add some little pearls here in the middle of these flowers. These are half pearls, meaning they are flat on the bottom. The other option might be to try blue pearls. No, not my thing. They might stand out a bit more, which is nice, but no, I don't like this blue. Going back to the white pearls, I'm considering adding these little beads here on the petals. Hmm, it's cute but it changes the whole vibe of the cover. I think until now it was grungy, but adding this bling, interestingly now, changes the vibe from grungy to more blingy, which I don't want for this cover, although it does look cute. I came up with another option. I have these cute little golden pearls. So let's see what these would look like. These are full pearls. And maybe I could add a few here where the petals are. I like that. Yeah, I think that's the right solution. So let me show you what these look like once they have almost dried. So this glue will dry clear. You can still see a little bit of it, but I think you get the impression. And I must say, I love it. I hope you join me for the second episode in which we will work on the signatures and include some more pieces from the jeans. We will sew in the signatures and then we will finalize the journal. Hope to see you then. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>